Welcome to Crosspoint. 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 An interactive program featuring ministers and leaders of the Christian community addressing the issues that are challenging the church today. Here's your host, Mark Taylor. Welcome to Cross Point. I'm Mark Taylor. Today we're going on a journey of faith with the minor prophets of the Bible. My guest is Nathan Jones. He's from Land and Lion Ministries, where also Steve Howell has helped him write a new book that's opened the gate for us to encourage us on this faith journey of the minor prophets of the Bible. Well, welcome back to Cross Point, uh, Nathan Jones. Uh, it's good to have you with us. Now, you've wrote an interesting book, along with Steve Howe, about the 12 faith journeys of the minor prophets. I don't know that I've known anybody ever to do that before. And so, right in the contents of the book there, you've got the 12 journeys, and you've got the minor prophets. So, if you could, as we get ready to talk about this, tell people who these minor prophets are that you talk about in this book, and uh, then we'll kind of go through their, each one of them's importance. Absolutely, Mark. Well, it's uh, good to be uh, on with you again. I appreciate that. Uh, well, let me tell you how I kind of came with the concept of the book. I'm up on the second floor here at the office at Lamb and Lion Ministries, and we have this tiny little attic door at the top, and someone before my time had pinned a sign at the top that said, Minor Prophets, as if this tiny little door is a home for these tiny little minor prophets. And one day I was like, well, I want to know what's inside this door. I haven't peeked in. So that's what I did. I peeked in, and I noticed that it was a little door to the attic, and inside of the attic it was a dusty, dirty, kind of unused room that no one ever went into. And the sign that said Minor Prophets above it all of a sudden clicked. It's like, you know what? The 12 Minor Prophets, that last section in the Old Testament, is much like a dusty, dirty, unused attic. Very few people go to it. Very few people read it, and sometimes when they're trying to find Matthew, they might accidentally go a few pages back to Malachi. But uh, it's a section of the Bible that is not well read, and so uh, my uh, good friend, Steve Howell, who's a pastor of Tonganoxie Christian Church uh, over there in Kansas, and I were like, well, you know, we need to address the faith journeys that the minor prophets went through, because they had all sorts of challenges to their faith, and they had to learn how to overcome them. And so that kind of gave us that that little door there gave us the impetus to write the book. Now, I'm looking at page nine of the book, and it says, some of the books in the Bible tell us about the actions of God and his people. These books of history are filled with facts and stories that tell us about the what of God's actions. You know, we have those major prophets, you know, you talk about Isaiah and Jeremiah and different ones like that. But these minor prophets really had just about as much to add into God's Word. I mean, it wouldn't be there if there wasn't. But, I mean, they really do make up a big part of what God's trying to tell people from His Word in the Old Testament. Absolutely. Yeah, we think of the major prophets. uh, It's Isaiah, um, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel. And, of course, Jeremiah wrote Lamentations. So those five books are called the major prophets because they wrote so much. They were so long. Isaiah, for instance, is 66 chapters. But when you get to the 12 minor prophets, they're a lot shorter, other than, say, Zechariah. They each chapter is sometimes one, two, three, maybe four chapters, and so we call them minor, but you're absolutely right. Just because their writings were short doesn't mean that they had a lot of insight, and amazing insight, actually, into God's heart. Because at this point Israel's, in Israel's history, Israel had rebelled against the Lord again and again and again, and his heart yearned for them to return to him and have a right relationship again. So you you get a lot of insight into God's passion for his people, his feeling of betrayal at the constant breaking of his covenant, his love and sacrifice for them, his constantly disciplining them for the hopes that they'll repent and turn back to him. And so you really get a lot of insight into God's heart and God's love, and that's the same love that he feels for us, the the people of his church today. Looking there on page... 11 of the book, uh, goals for the reader. So the person picks up this book and begins to read it. It says, we ask that you take these stories as intended as historical fiction to illustrate historical fact. We use narratives to help you fall in love with these prophets and see them as humans instead of merely hard to pronounce names. (laughs) Well, they do have some of them hard to pronounce names. Some of them had some very tremendous assignments, didn't they? They did. What that reference to is that before each chapter, Steve and I wrote a 
historical fiction, maybe three or four pages, to kind of give you a background of who these characters are. Uh, one of the issues with the minor prophets is a few of them don't have any context to who they were as people. But when you read their chapters, you get insights into who they are, and so we wanted to connect the audience to the, to the readers and to the minor prophets so they would kind of understand a little better. So, yeah, each chapter begins with a little historical fiction about that character. Then we go into each of the backgrounds of the characters, who they are, where they came from, what we learn, and then we go into what uh, were they trying to experience, what was their message that God was giving to help them call the people back to him. And then we get application at the end of the chapter for the church, for us, for Israel, and uh, so that's the kind of the formula for each of the chapters. Page 12 of the book, we're still kind of in the introduction part here of it, but it says each prophet wrote with a specific audience in mind. We simply want to help you get the most out of each of the books to hear God's message with fresh ears. Well, those minor prophets might have been called minor prophets, and they had a message to the society at that time, but they're not in the Bible just to be in there. They have a message to society today, do they not? Oh, absolutely. Like, look at Hosea, for instance, the first one. He learned how to have faith when your heart is shattered. So he had a uh, promiscuous wife, Gomer. She constantly betrayed him. And finally, uh, at that time period, that if you got in too much debt, you were sold into indentured servitude. And he bought her off of the auction block, just as God has bought his wayward people and restored them back to him. So Hosea learned to have faith when his heart is shattered. Joel, uh, faith through devastating loss. It's an agricultural society, and the people had this tremendous locust invasion. I mean, it just ate everything. The people are wailing and, you know, calling out to God, and that's what God wanted. He wanted to reconnect with his people who had just disconnected with them. And how can you have faith in God when you go through devastating losses? That's what Joel experienced. So you're correct, Mark. Each one of these apostles went through something that challenged their faith. What did they learn to overcome that faith challenge? And how did they grow in the relationship with Jesus? Uh, that's what each of the minor prophets learned. Well, you didn't so much start in order with them. But Faith Journey 1 starts with Hosea. And uh, one of the toughest ones, I think, I mean, he had to experience some stuff that was, well, most people didn't want to have to experience what he had to experience because of, uh, but it really the, the whole point was trying to prove to the people what they were like. And they used this man's life and his relationship with his wife and then her relationship and all that of how that all played together uh, with with God. And, you know, these prophets, people sometimes said, oh, you know, I'd love to uh, been a prophet or something like that. <laughs> prophets uh, many times had to go through some very hard stuff to get to be where God could use them as a prophet. Did he not? Oh, absolutely. I mean, they were just people like us. We kind of elevate them because they're in the Bible to be the super saints of the faith, but they were regular people like us. Uh, some were farmers, some were priests, uh, some were young men, some were old men, uh, they, different stages of life. They all, some were musicians, and so they're just people just like us, and so they had to grow in their faith journey just like we did. But as Second Peter one twenty one tells us, for prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So the Lord wanted to teach us something through the lives of these prophets. You know, Mark, there's actually three types of prophets. There's the writing prophets, which, of course, write the book. There's the speaking prophets, prophets who had messages but didn't write anything down, like Elijah or Elisha, for instance. And then you have the acting prophets. Those are the prophets that God would have them perform something as an object lesson to help the people understand the messages that he was giving. Well, he asked these minor prophets to do some pretty crazy things. I mean, really, you want to talk about some weirdos of the Bible. <laughs> I mean, we we look at things today and say, well, God would never do something like that. Well, some of the things he asked these people to do and the way he asked them to act was really trying to show society what they were like. You know, you got that first faith journey in there and you've got Hosea involved and his wife Gomer and all the things that happened there. But really it was you know, he was trying to sh he was trying to show Israel their unfaithfulness, and all their way that they acted, and the wicked way they acted, and the idolatrous way, and the lustful way they acted. That was the whole point. It wasn't in these two people, but it was for the whole nation. Absolutely, yes, yeah. Hosea was 
a writing prophet because we have the book of Hosea, but he was also an acting prophet. God commanded him to go marry a woman who was, you know, quite questionably morally. I don't know if she was fully a prostitute at that time, but eventually she became so. She constantly betrayed uh, Hosea. Of his three children, likely the last two of them were from different men. And uh, eventually, uh, over time, as she continued to sell herself and get more favors, she started degrading physically and uh, emotionally and, uh, and getting in tremendous debt and then had to be sold on the auction block as a slave. And God commands Hosea to go and buy her off the auction block and restore her to himself. And it's a, you can imagine what a broken, shattered heart Hosea must have had going through all that, but it reflects God's shattered heart as his people did the same thing as Gomer. That Gomer was the perfect example of Israel constantly betraying him, constantly breaking the covenant of marriage, and to the point where she had to be restored and redeemed back to Hosea, which was a symbol of what Jesus Christ did on the cross. By his death and resurrection, he redeemed us from our waywardness and death and restored us to him and made us pure. Yeah, you talk about a life that pretty much was trashed, and yet God said, I'll still do for you, and, you know, I'll, I'll restore you know, and actually he said, you know, I'll come and take you home. You know, I'll come, I'll buy you back. I'll, you know, and that, again, is what Christ has done. I mean, if you want to relate it that way as well. Uh, you know, this book is really set up for, uh, I think, uh, a way for people to use in a type of a Sunday school class or a Bible study, because uh, you got 12 weeks if you wanted to use it that way with these 12 minor prophets. But I, th- I think you can learn a lot by going through each one of these prophets here in the book. Oh, absolutely. Uh, well, this is the second edition that you're probably holding now. The first edition came out in 2016, but the newest edition, the Prophecy Edition, has just come out in the last few months. Yeah, that's the one I it's have. Meant right. to... Oh, okay, good, yeah. And that's the, that's the best one, I think, to have, because uh, when I released the first one, it was all, of course, about the faith journeys the minor prophets had. But we got to remember they're also prophets, so it's filled with prophecy. So what Steve and I added to each chapter is a list of all the prophecies the prophets gave, as well as what prophecies were uh, fulfilled, will be fulfilled, or in the future will be fulfilled. Yeah, and you have questions in your sections of your chapter, so you're always asking people, in a way, what they're getting out of these when they read it and stuff. And, you know, I guess sometimes it doesn't really take a profit, but it kind of can make people look at their own lives, some of the journeys they've been on and some of the things that they've been involved in, and how God's intervened in their lives. I mean, to me, you can get this out of these book, this book as well. Oh, absolutely. And we've had many Bible studies use this book. Uh, one locally, a group of women and they asked me to, by Zoom, tune in and, and give a kind of an intro to the book. And and uh, the, the group leader was like, ah, our lady, ladies aren't really excited about learning the minor prophets because, you know, again, it's that part of the Bible most people kind of avoid. But by the end, she said, but she let me know later, because they were so excited because there's so many applications that we can make from what the minor prophets teach that are applicable to our own faith journeys today. So, again, I think it's a treasure in the Bible that's often overlooked. Okay, so you mentioned that word, faith journeys. Uh, Why do you call them faith journeys? Because it's our own personal faith involved in this as well? Well, Hebrews 11.1 defines faith as the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And so that's how we learn what faith is. Our faith in God, though, is often challenged by quite a number of different things to to thwart us from keeping on the path with the Lord, for instance, like Hosea, for instance. A lot of times devastation or, you know, broken relationships will break us from our relationship with God. Uh, People tend to blame God often for uh, things that happen in our lives, and it hurts our relationship with the Lord. And the most important thing in life is to have a great relationship with Jesus Christ, a healthy relationship. For like, so Hosea, for instance, when people betray us or we feel betrayed, how do we deal with that? How do we grow in our faith? And so there is application in each chapter for the nations, for the church, for Israel, but also for ourselves. We have a little section each for you. How, does, how do we apply what they learn to our lives? You know, Joel, for instance, like I said, devastating loss. The, everybody's incomes were basically eaten away. How do we relate to God during those times? You know, do we pull away? Do we blame God? Or do we draw close to him and call to him for help? And how do we apply that to our lives? There's others like Amos who dealt with, 
injustice in society. How do you deal with injustice in the world? Uh, there's this called the problem of evil. It's an apologetics term. It means how do we deal with uh, God when there's evil in the world? How can we trust there's an omnibenevolent God when evil happens? Well, Amos teaches us. So, yeah, each lesson that the minor prophets learn helps us grow in our faith. Well, folks, stay with us, and we're going to be back with more right after this. Hi, I'm Sue Taylor, and I host the Faith to Live By podcast, available from the Sky High Podcast Network. Are you looking for a little spiritual pick-me-up as you begin your day? Each weekday morning, I have a short devotional thought to get you going and give you something to reflect on as you go about your day. Faith is not just something you need when you get saved. Faith is something you live by. Look up Faith to Live By with Sue Taylor wherever you get your podcasts and subscribe today. This is Mark Taylor. If you miss a broadcast of Crosspoint, you can always go to our website at www.kneo.org and click on the programs page. There you can access the current Crosspoint program as well as the last four programs that have been aired. Never miss another Crosspoint program again. Go to www.kneo.org today. Welcome back to Crosspoint. I'm Mark Taylor. My guest today is Nathan Jones, who, along with Steve Howe, have written this book called 12 Faith Journeys of the Minor Prophets. You've written other books as well. You've got a ministry there at uh, Lamb and Lion uh, Ministries. But tell us a little bit about how they, people can find out more about this book, 12 Faith Journeys. Okay. Well, again, I'm uh, Dr. Nathan Jones. I'm the Internet Evangelist for Lamb and Lion Ministries. We're a Bible prophecy teaching ministry, and our mission is is to proclaim the soon return of Jesus Christ. We believe that the signs of the times indicate that Jesus Christ is coming soon. And we're excited about that, and we want to share that excitement with you, how to help you prepare for the Lord's return. How do we prepare? We, as if we don't know Jesus as our Savior, we get saved. <laughs> you know, we, we call upon Him to save us from our sins. Uh, if we're already saved, then we ask Him to guide us in holy living and evangelism. So that's the purpose of Lamb and Lion Ministries. And if you're looking to get 12 Faith Journeys of the Minor Prophets, you can go to our website at ChristInProphecy.org. There we have a wealth of information to help you grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ. We have our TV show, Christ in Prophecy, which, Mark, most people know our ministry through our TV show, which was founded by Dr. David Reagan, but now Tim Moore and myself are the hosts. We have our radio program just begun this year called Christ in Prophecy Radio, and we have many newsletters, our Lamplighter magazine, and social media people can sign up for to help them grow in their relationship with Jesus Christ. You can also find the book on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and whether print or ebooks, they're both available. And we are that radio broadcast here as well on the station, so we get to kind of hear from you each and every week. <laughs> well, a question, praise the Lord. I, a question I have, this is called 12 Faith Journeys of the Minor Prophets, Prophecy Edition, but you said there is another edition to this as well that came out first, is that correct? Yes, the first edition didn't have the addendum in each of the chapters that lists all the prophecies found in the book. So wanted to make sure that not only were people growing in their faith, but one of the best, what we call apologetics, or defense of the faith, is the fact that Bible prophecy is in the Bible and is fulfilled. Matter of fact, the New Testament alone, there are over 250 quotes in the New Testament from the books of the minor prophets. So uh, the, it wasn't something as one famous pastor recently said, as we just should have cut the Old Testament off. No way! The New Testament is grounded and founded in the Old Testament, and many of the prophecies found in the Old Testament, particularly the Minor Prophets, are applicable to our present day and also into the future. So yeah, there's a tremendous amount of prophecies that can be found in there. And what I do is in each of the chapters there, we give a list of all the prophecies that you can find in that book. For instance, uh, Hosea. There's 197 verses in Hosea. 96 are prophetic verses, so 49% of the book of Hosea is prophetic. Four prophecies were historically fulfilled, four are partial fulfilled, and 11, 11 are waiting future fulfillment. So these books aren't ancient history, they're still relevant and applicable to today and the future. 
Well, you've got some people that know, I'd say Joel is a name that people know if they've read the Bible some, especially Jonah. That was, Jonah was considered uh, in this group as well. But when you get to some of the Zephaniah, you know, Zechariah and Malachi, I don't know how many people really, uh, un, you know, have studied that much into those areas. And, and some of them are pretty short. They're not a very long, uh, you know, chapters of the Bible uh, to go in and really in depth. Nothing like what Isaiah and Jeremiah is, uh, you know, in the list of, of the amount of pages there of all the things involved. But again, these minor prophets, as you have said here and, and point out in your book, are really pointing people to the Messiah and other things that are to come that really even affect our future as where we're sitting right now here in America. So many of the prophecies are actually about Christ's coming kingdom, the, what we call the millennial kingdom. Some folks will say, well, Revelation 20 is the only place you can find that really discusses the, the millennial kingdom, but that's not true. The prophets in the Old Testament, the Psalms, even some of the historical writings, all prophesied the return of the king, the setting up of the Davidic kingdom, where the descendant of David, Jesus Christ, will rule and reign on this earth. And we know from Revelation 20 that will be for a thousand years. So these prophecies that were in the Old Testament, particularly the minor prophets, are proclaiming the Messiah, not only his first coming, but also his second coming. So again, very relevant today because we believe the signs of the times point to the fact that Jesus Christ is coming soon. So we're going to see it. numerous of these prophecies start to be fulfilled, maybe even in our lifetime. Oh, I would I would say so. And you know, the one you have in here on Joel, well, there you've got a prophet who really is connecting prophecy with the last days because Joel is referred to towards the end of the New Testament as pointing out of way it will be in the last days. So is he not? Oh, absolutely. Now, Joel had to deal with a, a devastating attack of locusts, uh, you know, the, pretty much in an agrarian society. That's a, a death. That's like our stock market collapsing. It's, <laughs> it's the end of economy. And, and so the people have gotten real lackadaisical in their relationship with God. And God sent that locust invasion to eat all their food so that people would cry out to him. And they did. And he restored their food and uh, they had restored their relationship. So Joel had, and the people had to learn to have faith through devastating loss. But of the 73 verses found in the book of Joel, 48 are prophetic, so 66% are prophetic. Now, there's no historically fulfilled prophecies in Joel, but there's three that were partially fulfilled, and 10, 10 are waiting future fulfillment. And these are prophecies, which are called the Day of the Lord. It's a, it's a prophecy about a time where God will judge the world in an event called the Tribulation, similar to the flood, where God finally says, all right, enough's enough, the evil has grown too much in the world, it's time to judge the world for its sins, and in judging people, when things get really bad, people get on their knees, they call out to Jesus and repent, and that relationship is restored, and so millions and millions of people will come to know Jesus during the day of the Lord, the tribulation, but beforehand, we believe here at Lamb and Lion Ministries that the church will be raptured off this earth before that time period. Now, you also talk in here about Micah, and you, you're talking about faith. You're talking about government. Uh, faith when government has failed. Well, that would somewhat relate <laughs> to what's going on today. I mean, it's obvious our government's not going to save us. It's ob obvious our government's in trouble and it's failing us. And uh, so we can learn a lot from Micah's journey in this as a minor prophet of where we're at today. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, that's one of the, I think my favorite chapter is Micah. I mean, you get through Amos, who had to ha learn how to have faith through the fires of injustice. Obadiah, faith when it seems like God has forgotten you. Jonah, faith when you just don't feel like it. Jonah just didn't feel like serving the Lord. But Micah, Micah had to call out the evil of government after government has failed. And, you know, uh, Mark, a lot of people today put their faith in government to save them. They're looking for a political savior, very much like the Jews were in the first century when Jesus first came. They rejected him because they expected him to be a political savior and rescue their people from the Roman Empire. Well, today, you know, we look for politicians to go up and change the government and fix it, but you can't fix government when it's filled with fallen, sinful people. And that's why we need the King of Kings and Lord of Lords ruling and reigning on this earth in his millennial kingdom 
to have that perfect type of government. So, yeah, it was very challenging to, to Micah and his faith that his government has failed, it was evil, it was corrupt, but uh, he still held fast to God and trusted that there was a better government coming, one where the King of Kings ruled and reigned. Two, also with these prophets, if they was really someone that wanted uh, or understood what was going on and really did follow the scriptures and scrolls back in those days, there wasn't people just always throwing their hand up and saying, choose me <laughs> to be a prophet. A lot of these people were a little bit reluctant to want to take on this position because a lot of times it required a lot of sacrifice and uh, a lot of personal cost to them. Absolutely. If you go to Hebrews eleven thirty six 36 through 38, it reads, still others, talking about the prophets, had trial of mockings and scourging, yes, of the chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. They were tempted and slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains, in dens and caves of the earth. So you're absolutely right, Mark. I don't think anybody really would want to be a prophet of God and here at Lamb and Lion Ministries, we believe the gift of prophecy, since the Bible is the total of the revelation God given us, have no new prophecies. But if you have the gift of prophecy today, it's the urgent telling of the gospel, the proclaiming of the soon return of Jesus Christ. That's the gift of prophecy today. Now, I'm looking at page 208. We're talking about Habakkuk. Uh, here it's called construction of a prophet. It says, with most of the minor prophets, our knowledge of their life situation is speculative. Uh, we have to stitch together a few bits of information from the text to produce a fuzzy image of who the writer might have been. Uh, how do you verify some of these things? Uh, you know, what do you use to when you're trying to read that to make sure you know what they are actually saying that you're trying to get out here in this book? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you have to do your research. You have to go through the commentaries and the text and uh, the other authors from the time period. Uh, there's other references throughout the Bible about some of these prophets. For instance, uh, Jonah, for instance, the Jesus referred to the sign of Jonah. So you have to go back and like, well, what is Jesus talking about? As Jonah was in the fish for three days and three nights, so the Son of Man would be in the ground for three days and three nights. And so there you've got the parallels, and you can kind of learn about them. Now, for Jonah, if most people know about Jonah because of the, the wonderful story about him trying to run away from God and God using a great fish or whale to bring him back. Uh, but some of the other prophets, there's not a lot about. Uh, you know, we learn about Nahum having faith and when there's certain victory. A lot of times in victory, we forget about God. Well, how do we maintain our faith in that? And Habakkuk, he was confused about what God was doing, but he still maintained his faith. That's why I love Habakkuk 2.4. One of my favorite verses it says, the just shall live by faith. So we can learn about the prophets through the narrative that's given in their books, through other books in the Bible that refer to the minor prophets, through the writings of the time period uh, that are extra biblical, and through the commentaries and studies of other people, too. And frankly, Mark, when we just didn't know something about the prophet, we just said it. <laughs> we don't know. You know, we're not going to make something up uh, if we don't know. When you're digging around trying to find out all this information, if if a person wants to study these prophets and really dig in there and do the follow-up it takes, that can really deepen our faith in God and what he really wants to do with our own lives, because does he not still call some of us to be minor prophets today? Oh, absolutely. I think as Christians, we're all called to be defenders of the faith, the proclaimers of the gospel, and to proclaim the fact that the Lord still got plans for us. He still has wonderful plans for us, plans to benefit us and, and help us grow in our relationship with Him. Uh, I think of it this way, that the Lord is working to get us back to that Garden of Eden relationship that we had. You know, in the Garden, God walked and talked with Adam and Eve, and they had perfect fellowship together. But when mankind sinned, that sin separated us from God, the holy from the unholy, and so all of human history is getting us back into that right relationship with the Lord, which he achieved through the sacrifice of his Son on the cross, so that we might then spend forever with him in eternity back in that right garden relationship again. And so part of what we learn from the Minor Prophets is how to continue to grow in our faith in that relationship with the Lord, that one day when we're standing before him face to face, it's just like back in the Garden of Eden again that perfect fellowship is restored. 
again, tell people how they can find out more about this book here before we go to a break about the 12 uh, Faith Journeys of the Minor Prophets. Absolutely. Well, you can get the 12 Faith Journeys of the Minor Prophets by going to our website at ChristInProphecy.org or easier, Amazon. We both have it in print and ebook, and all your ebook platforms are available. Okay, well, folks, stay with us, and we're going to have more right after this. Never miss your favorite show again. For more than 30 years, KNEO has been bringing you great Bible teachers on a local and national level. And now we've made it easier than ever to hear from these great men and women of God. KNEO's entire lineup is now available to listen anytime, anywhere through our website. Go to KNEO.org slash podcast to see all the options. You can search for programs alphabetically, or you can select individual categories like culture, kids, leadership, or music. We even have a category just for locally produced programs, so you can hear from pastors and spiritual leaders located right here in the four-state area. And all these resources are absolutely free. Kaneo's mission is to get God's Word in front of you, and this is one of the ways we do it. Give it a try today. Go to kaneo.org and click on the podcast tab to get started. Offering words to encourage, teaching to inspire, and truth that defines real life. This is who we are, what we offer, and what you can expect. 91.7 The Word. Welcome back to Cross Point. I'm your host, Mark Taylor, and today we're talking about the 12 faith journeys of the minor prophets. We're talking with Nathan Jones. Steve Howells helped him with this book and putting it together. You know, looking at the book, it really will help people, I believe, get a deeper faith of really what God wants to do and how he uses people's lives uh, to make a difference in all of our lives. I mean, these might have been considered minor prophets, but look at all the people's lives since that time that they've affected, and their word's still there for us today to affect more people. Oh, very well said, Mark. Uh, it's true that the minor prophets' messages, the faith journeys that each of the minor prophets went through, are applicable to us today. Uh, again, these are people just like us. They might have lived in a different time period, in a different culture, but as Kermit the Frog says, peoples are peoples, and we're just the same as they were. They might have seemed like paragons of the faith, but uh, they were just men and women who had to learn what God had in store for them. Uh, and so these men, these 12 men, had uh, different messages that we can learn about how to grow in our faith. Like, uh, for instance, we talked about Nahum a little bit. Uh, what happens when the Lord gives victory in your life? You know, a lot of times, victory in our life, when things are going good, is often when our faith is most challenged, because we think, oh, we've got it all together, we don't need God. And so that was something Nahum had to learn. Habakkuk had to learn, well, God, what what are you doing? I don't understand. And God just says, hey, the just shall live by faith. In other words, just trust me. So Habakkuk learned how to have faith when you're confused. Zephaniah, he was a courtier, he was a relative of the king, But there was a lot of pressure for him to conform to the false prophets and basically tell the king what he wanted to hear. And, well, Zephaniah was given a message by the Lord, so he had to learn how to have faith under peer pressure to tell the king exactly what God wanted him to say. And that's the story of King Josiah, good King Josiah, who went out and changed the culture and changed the country based on what God told him through Zephaniah. So it's about standing strong and and standing up for the Word of God. Now, on one of your faith journeys, you got Zechariah. You call it the prophet of the future hope and the time of the prophet. Now, we've got people like John in Revelation. Uh, we have Daniel. And yet here's a prophet that's considered a minor prophet that we don't hear that much about. But he's connecting all these things between John and Daniel, it looks like, here where he's talking. So after we're done with Haggai, which is faith when you're guilty, in other words, when you're committed a sin, how do you have faith and return to the Lord? Zechariah is wonderful, Mark, because it's basically the book of Revelation in the Old Testament. It's it's sometimes called the mini book of Revelation, and it's just absolutely filled with prophecies about the future, and uh, there's so much that we can learn from Zechariah and what his faith journey was. Matter of fact, it's one of the longer of the minor prophets, 211 verses. 134 verses are prophetic. That means 64 percent of the book of Zechariah's prophecy five historically fulfilled, seven waiting partial fulfillment, and 25, 25 prophecies that are still future. So the book of Zechariah is very relevant today. Matter of fact, Zechariah 12 and 14 is about the whole world coming against Israel in the last days, 
And brother, you and I have seen as anti-Semitism is spreading across the world, and the nations are raging against Israel, that we're very much entering that time of the last days where the whole world will come against Israel. So staying here on this faith journey 11 of Zechariah, you say lessons for the church. It says, how can the church maintain faith in God when the future looks bleak with terrible persecution on sides and spiritual apathy and apostasy? Uh, On the other, the future at this time does indeed look terribly bleak for the body of Christ to rectify these uh, challenges to the faith. The church needs to recapture what the Jewish people of Zechariah's time learned to embrace when building their, their city on a hill. These lessons were then, there's lessons for today. To me now, some of the minor prophets, like this one here, is really more relevant today than it maybe was relevant back then. Yes, as as Pastor D. Stuart Briscoe once said, he said, a sense of divine majesty and power, righteousness and justice, need to be recaptured in the modern church so we can take God seriously. Uh, A lot of churches today... Do their, uh, make their interpretations on Bible prophecy, which is 31% of the Bible, and they base it on what's called amillennialism, meaning no millennium, no future kingdom of Christ. It's uh, unfortunately a spiritualized interpretation of the, of the Bible that came from Augustine uh, many years ago, and unfortunately it left the Church bereft of the future hope that God meant us to have in understanding Bible prophecy. We here at Lamb and Lion Ministries believe uh, in the golden rule of interpretation of the Bible. The plain sense makes sense. Look for no other sense, lest you end up with nonsense. So we believe in a literal interpretation of the Bible will lead us to a proper understanding of God's Word. And that means that these prophecies also have future fulfillment. And there's a, many of them that meant to give us hope that this evil world will end. Jesus will return to defeat evil set up his kingdom of peace and righteousness and justice, and we, his servants, his church, will rule and reign with him. That gives us hope for the future. Now, also, I want to kind of point out to people, they get this book, you got questions for discussion in, in you know, behind the chapters, but then you've got all these lists of prophecies and a prophetic court, <laughs> uh, you've got all kinds of stuff, and you're referring back to some of the other minor prophets and what they might have said that uh, correlates with what this minor prophet says and other prophets as well. You've done some real in-depth stuff here. If somebody really wants to get into studying this book, uh, really they'll want to study, of course, the minor prophets. But I can see where this could be a real good series for a church to uh, to use to, to follow. Well, thanks, Mark. That, that was our goal. Again, our, our initial and in, in still our primary purpose to help people grow in their faith. You know, it would be a shame to read the Minor Prophets then miss all the prophecies in it, because fulfilled Bible prophecy is one of the best defenses, the fact that the Bible is the Word of God. There's no other book written in history, no religious book that has real, genuine prophecies and fulfilled prophecy, and that's what you find in the Bible. Many prophecy after prophecy after prophecy. For instance, Jesus' first coming... There's 300 general and 109 distinct prophecies about Jesus' first coming, from his where he'd be born and having to flee to Egypt, uh, becoming out of Nazareth, his family line, that he'd be crucified, buried, and resurrected. Uh, All these different prophecies point to the fact that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. And then there's 500 general, and one in 25 verses in the New Testament prophesied Jesus' second coming. So... If we can trust that all 100% of the prophecies were fulfilled in Christ's first coming happened, then how much sure can we be about a second coming? Mark, I believe, 100%. Looking towards the end of the book here, page 336, you say, The minor prophets demonstrate the might and the power and the strength and love and determination of God. They proved through their faith journeys that God always, always keeps his promises. Then you got a quote here from Charles uh, Wesley that says, Faith, mighty faith, the promise sees and the looks to that alone, laughs at life's impossibilities in Christ, it shall be done. Uh, so, you know, yeah, some of these minor prophets were challenged. Uh, people didn't believe them at first, but because they stuck with it and did what God asked them to do, people seen that God was using their lives, and the message did get through. Absolutely. And that was a challenge Malachi had. Uh, as a priest, he noticed that people just were going through the motions of religion, and boy, is that a 
great lesson for us today, because so much of the Church today is just going through the motions. The passion and the need for the Lord is it just seemed to be vacant in our modern lives. And so the Lord said, okay, well, if you don't want anything to do with me, then I'm going to give you 400 years of silence. And the Lord had no new messages for the Jewish people until Jesus came 400 years later. Now, we have the Holy Spirit in us with the Church, so, you know, how much better. But, right, when, when you're challenged in your faith, as, as Malachi was, then how do you come to know Jesus as, as your Savior? How do you grow in your relationship? Well, the just shall live by faith. If, if we trust in Jesus Christ, that he's got all things under control, and uh, our faith can just grow in leaps and bounds because we let God do all the work. Now, what you were just talking about, in the very back of the book, you've got your notes section, and you go again through each chapter, just a little bit there, talking about where you got some of the information in that. You go back to the Faith Journey 1, uh, you know, when with Hosea, Faith when your heart is shattered. Then you got Faith Journey 2, Joel, Faith through devastating loss. Faith Journey 3, Amos, Faith through the fires of injustice. Then Faith Journey 4 is Obadiah, Faith when it seems like God is forgotten. Then Faith Journey number 5, Jonah, when Faith when you don't feel like it. <clears throat> then Faith number 6 is, is uh, Micah, Faith when government has failed. And then Faith Journey 7, Nahum, Faith in certain victory. And then your eighth Faith Journey is Habakkuk, Faith when you're confused. That's a good one. Faith journey number nine, Zephaniah. Faith under peer pressure. Faith journey 10. Hey, guy, faith when you're guilty. Yeah, when you're guilty. That's pretty interesting. Faith <laughs> journey 11. <laughs> guilty, yeah. <clears throat> Zechariah with faith when the future looks bleak. Then faith journey 12 is uh, Malachi, faith when you're questioned. Uh, <laughs> it all centers around faith, doesn't it? It does, and, and that's really the key there. The just shall live by faith. Uh, another good verse is Hosea 8, 7. They sow the wind and reap the whirlwind. And Mark, you know, we live in a time period where as people reject God, as especially our governments, you know, kick God out of every sector of our society, uh, we're sowing the wind and we're going to reap the whirlwind. And we are, as society appears to collapse around us. Uh, uh, chaos is reigning. And so uh, these are the lessons that we learn from the minor prophets is you know, how do we stand? Well, again, Habakkuk 2 4, the just shall live by faith. Uh, Behold the proud, is the whole verse. His soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. You know, a lot of people have written books, you know, about these minor prophets. And I've noticed in here, too, that you have went through what some of them, you know, like G. Campbell Morgan and others, uh, have talked about these areas. You've did a little bit of research there as well and got a little bit of wisdom from those in the past that have uh, really studied the uh, depth uh, these minor prophets to kind of bring forth what the really the minor prophet is to us today. Absolutely. Steve and I read dozens of other books, uh, commentaries on the minor prophets, uh, sermons from like J. Vernon McGee and others. And, you know, we wanted to hit, uh, hit the commentaries. Uh, Steve has the ability to hit the original languages, which he did. And uh, so between the two of us, we really wanted to study about, because the faith journeys of the minor prophets have been lived out in all Christians for the last 2,000 years. So some of the leaders of Christianity, past, present, and future, we wanted to know about their faith journeys as well and what they got out of each of the Minor Prophets books to help us in our own faith journeys. So I think you're right. I think the 12 Faith Journeys of the Minor Prophets is a book that compiles not only the faith journeys of the Minor Prophets, but all those who come after it who we've researched and grown in their faith as well to help us grow in our faith. Nathan, do you think it'd be a good idea when they take these 12 faith journeys with these minor prophets, that is, they have your book here and open it and studying it and reading it, that it'd be good to have their Bible right next to them to uh, do some cross-referencing? Oh, my goodness. I, you got to go to the Bible first. <laughs> read, read, the, read the book. Some people uh, that have taken it as a Bible study have told me they either some prefer to read the book of, of you know, Malachi, for instance, and then read our chapter some read the chapter first and then read Malachi, 
But either way, the Bible is the primary source, and we'll always point to that first. Before you go here, tell people again how they can find out 12 Faith Journeys of the Minor Prophets. Now, this is the prophecy edition that you've done. You did another edition as well, and uh, you, along with Steve Howell, have have put this one together. Uh, So tell people how they can find out more about this book, also Lamb and Lion Ministries, uh, and what all it does. Uh, How do they go about doing that? You can go to our website at ChristinProphecy.org or download our Lamb Lion app. And if you want the book, we have it on our online store, or you can go to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and many other platforms. Okay, well, we really do appreciate you taking the time to uh, be with us today here on Crosspoint. We look forward to uh, when we can talk again, as I know you guys are always working to get people's uh, attention uh, in the area of prophecy. Oh, my pleasure, Mark. I'm working with Harvest House to write a book on the Millennial Kingdom, so next year there will be another book coming out. And uh, all these prophecies that the Minor Prophets made about the Millennial Kingdom, well, now we'll see their fulfillment in that book about the Millennial Kingdom. You have a blessed day, and thanks for being with us. God bless you all. Boy, it was a good interview we had today with Nathan, and they did put a great book together here, folks. Hey, this would be a great Bible study. And with this other book in my other hand here, the Holy Bible, you put those two things together, you could uh, really have an interesting a home Bible study, a Sunday school class, or whatever. And the Bible, as Nathan said today, we center everything around God's Word because it is the inspired words of God. The words are never outdated. And the Bible contains the most important words you're ever going to read and certainly ever follow. Be sure to join us again next time as we again discuss issues that are affecting the church. Have a great week and allow God to use you for His purposes so that greater things can be done. Make your life count in God's plans for eternity. I'm Mark Taylor. Cross Point is a program produced in Studio 101 at KNAO Radio. Not all of the views on Cross Point reflect those of the management or staff of KNAO. You may contact the Crosspoint program at 10827 Highway 86 East, the Osho, Missouri, 64850, or by email crosspoint at kneo.org. You can hear Crosspoint four times a week, Saturday morning at 1, Saturday afternoon at 2, Saturday evening at 9, and Sunday evening at 7. You can also listen anytime online at kneo.org. Harper's Kennel of Stella, Missouri is proud to be sponsoring this portion of broadcasting on KNEO. Owned by Judy and Danny Harper, Harper's Kennel of Stella, Missouri specializes in French Bulldogs. For more information, the phone number is 417-628-3083. Are you a Christian who likes to read? If not, there's a whole world of Christian publishing out there that you're missing out on. I invite you to check out the Author's Corner podcast where I talk to the latest Christian authors each week about their new book releases and what's coming next. So if you're ready to jumpstart your spiritual growth with the newest books and the authors who write them, check out the Author's Corner podcast with me, Roberta Foster.